We finally got our hybrid solar system installed. But what will this thing power? And more importantly, how does the bloody thing work? Stick around because I'm going to explain to you everything you need to know about solar in very simple terms that even a person like me would understand. In this video we'll discuss what a hybrid solar system is and how it works in very simple terms. I'll teach you how to calculate your appliance load in kilowatt hours and what that means. Also we'll discuss what our 6.6 .6 kilowatt system will actually run in terms of appliances in real world conditions with varying scenarios. And I'll share some fantastic tips if you are planning on installing solar or your existing solar system is not performing as it should. Now, if you can listen to my boring voice for just 10 minutes, I think you're gonna find real value. Now, let's cut the bullshit and get into it. Now, just for context, we are just finishing our home in a little island called Bohol in the Philippines, where solar setups are just becoming a little bit more popular since the crazy era of COVID. Our aim is to be as self-sustainable as possible so that we don't have to work much and uh, can stay semi-retired. We live in a country where electricity prices are disproportionately high to the average cost of living. However, solar systems here seem to be around about half the price of what I paid back in Australia. We also have a lot of sun, so solar for us was a no-brainer. And then there's the fact that despite paying a premium for electricity here, we still experience a lot of power cuts. So having a hybrid system with a battery backup seemed essential for us. Now I'm going to introduce you to Giulietto who is the installer and supplier of our system and he'll explain exactly what we have in our house. I'm here with Giulietto Agnesco uh, from Bahol Solar Silver. The whole solar savers. He's done the solar installation for us. Solar panel uh, by 50 watts. Uh advanced power brand that is uh, 12 pieces. 12 yeah. pieces and then uh, so that would equate to 6.6 .6 kilowatts? Yes, that's correct. And then um, today Juliet has just installed uh, this, what, this is the 6 kilowatt inverter? Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, we put uh, breakers here, the yeah. AC breakers and DC breakers, safety breakers from the DC and also from AC. Okay, and we're going to do a, a gen set switch as well which will um, so if we do get a generator at some stage. Yeah, yeah, we can put ginset, then we put uh, MTS, that is manual transfer switch. It is 10 kilowatts, 10.2 kilowatt hour battery. You can add another one if you want to upgrade. Yeah. Yeah, it's better you have the a storage, uh, another storage for the battery. Yeah. Harvest from the solar panel. And I was just saying to Julieta that in Australia, I had a 9.6 kilowatt battery, yeah. and it was ginormous. It was like each, it was a stack of three batteries. So obviously, the technology has come along. Yeah. Now, quick tip before we move on: if you are currently building a house and thinking about having a solar system installed, I would really recommend doing it now while your ceiling cavities are exposed. Then they can just run the wires, and you don't have to make holes in your roof uh, at a later stage where you could potentially have leaks right down to the nuts and bolts. How does solar work? Let's break it down into simple terms. Starting with the solar panels which sit on your roof and absorb sunlight as energy. Then turns your energy into DC power or direct current power. We have 12 panels, 550 watts each under full sun. So that will vary depending on the sun and clouds and any shade that you might have over your house. On a sunny day with a minimum of six peak hours shining on our 12 550 watt panels, that would give us around 6.6 .6 kilowatts combined. We would expect to receive about 80% of that power, which would equivalent to about 32 kilowatt hours. Now I know it sounds all a bit complicated, but I will explain what kilowatt hours are and run some different scenarios to make sense a little bit later on in the video. If it was a really cloudy day where we get, say, a maximum of two and a half hours of peak sunlight on the panels, we would obviously expect a much lower production of power, somewhere around about 13.25 kilowatt hours. So that's our solar panels. They create the energy or capture the energy from the sun and they feed that into the inverter. The inverter's job is to change the DC power into AC so it can be used in a home uh, to run appliances. That's alternating current. The inverter then takes that energy and feeds it into the house so it can be used to power our appliances. Anything left over then gets fed into the battery and then the battery can be used later on when the solar panels stop producing energy, e.g. nighttime. On a good day our solar setup could produce over 30 kilowatt hours of power. 
Say we only use 20 kilowatt hours of power during the day, the excess 10 kilowatts would be fed into the battery and stored for later for nighttime use to run air cons and refrigerators or if we have any power outages. Any extra power over that would then be fed back to the grid or if we're off grid then it would just simply be wasted. In some cases you could actually sell that power back to the grid and get a credit on your power bill or be paid. Probably not in the Philippines. Now unlike the old style lead acid batteries, lithium batteries can be almost completely depleted and have no issues. When the battery does become completely flat, we then turn over to using the grid power and start paying. A couple of quick tips before we move on. If you are installing a new system, make sure that your inverter is battery ready, even if you're not installing a battery at the time. This means that at a later stage, you could add a battery to that inverter. Also have a look to see if your inverter can be expanded to add another one. Um, like for instance, we are looking at maybe adding another six kilowatt inverter at a later stage if we build more guest houses on our property. Here's Giulietto, he's gonna explain how that works. So it's, it's, it's adaptable, so whatever we put in here, we can expand if we, if we need to. Yeah, 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 we can put uh, the, another battery in here. And then yep. If you want to upgrade the inverter, we can put also another inverter. Uh, yep, so you can have an additional inverter. You, you don't have to just, let's say, increase this from 6 kilowatt. You can just put another inverter and divert the power. Yeah, we can parallel another inverter, like yep. another 6 kilowatts, and then add uh, some panels, yep. and then also another battery. Then we can uh, make another wirings uh, to parallel the inverters that you're 6 kilowatts and become 12 kilowatts. Yeah. If you are building a new house, it is really important that you carefully consider where you place it on the property. You want to make sure that you put it in a place that's going to maximize the sunlight on your panels. You may also consider removing some trees to make sure that it's not under any shade. So what will our 6.6 .6 kilowatt hybrid system actually run in real world terms? I think firstly we need to understand how to calculate energy use. I think this is where a lot of people get confused, including myself, before I did this research, but it's actually quite simple. So here's the formula. Power, which is wattage, times time in hours, and then divide that by a thousand to give you the kilowatt hours. For example, let's take our one horsepower aircon that runs for around 10 hours per day at 750 watts per hour. So 750 watts per hour times by 10 hours of use, 750 times 10 gives us 7,500 watt hour. We then divide that by 1,000 to give us the kilowatt hours, which gives us about 7.5 kilowatt hours. So just one, one horsepower air conditioning unit running for just 10 hours a day at 750 watts per hour, which is the average for a one horsepower air conditioning unit, is going to use 7.5 kilowatt hours, which is quite a large chunk of our 30 kilowatt production. So let's take a look at the appliances we plan to run in our new home. Based on our calculations on this chart, on days where we don't use a washing machine, have no guests staying, and only use one air conditioning unit for 10 hours a day, our total base daily consumption would be around about 19.35 kilowatt hours. The largest drawers of power are obviously the fridges and the air cons, with our smaller appliances drawing very little. As you can see, we're planning to have a couple of medium sized fridges, a bar fridge. Uh, we do actually have three one horsepower uh, air conditioning units, um, but we'll only be using one unless we have guests in the other two rooms. So you can see the ceiling fans, uh, we're going to be running for about 12 hours a day because we don't have air conditioning units in our main living area, only uses about 1.2 kilowatt hours. And then the smaller appliances like charging phones and laptops are very, very little. Let's take a closer look at how much power our solar system can produce. Now we have 6.6 .6 kilowatts of solar panels on the roof and a 6 kilowatt inverter, which is changing the DC to the AC power and feeding that into the house. The first consideration is that even though our solar panels equate to 6.6 .6 kilowatts, even on a sunny day, we're only gonna receive around about 80% of that power into the home. So in ideal conditions, we will only receive about 5.3 kilowatts per hour. So in realistic conditions, let's assume the best case scenario, six peak hours of sun, which would be around about 31.8 kilowatt hours per day. An average case of 4.5 peak hours of sun per day would be about 23.85. And the worst case on a really cloudy, rainy day, 2.5 hours of peak uh, sun, which would be around about 13.25 kilowatt hours per day. 
So our 10.2 kilowatt battery would store any excess power that comes into the house. Let's take a look at scenario one, which would be the best case, a minimum of six peak hours of sunlight on our solar panels per day. The solar production would then be about 31.8 kilowatt hours. Our base usage, uh, based on the chart that we showed you with our appliances, would be about 19.35. So we'd actually have a surplus of 12.45 kilowatt hours and the excess would be stored in the battery or sent to the grid. At night time we could use that battery to power pretty much everything and we would be pretty much self-sufficient. Scenario two is an average day with a little bit of cloud, maybe a little bit of rain, a minimum of 4.5 peak hours of sunlight on the solar panels. So the solar production would be roughly about 23.85 kilowatt hours. Our base usage again, 19.35, which would give us a surplus of 4.5 kilowatt hours, and that would be fed back into the battery and used at nighttime or if we had any power outages. Scenario three is our worst case, where it's pretty much rainy and cloudy most of the day, and we only get a maximum of 2.5 hours of peak sunlight on the solar panels. In this instance, the solar production would probably go down to about 13.25 kilowatt hours. Our base usage being 19.35 would mean that we have a deficit, this time of about 6.1 kilowatt hours, and be dependent on the grid. In this instance, obviously the battery will not charge, so overnight we will be dependent on the grid, and it will cost us a little bit of money, but still, it's going to be cheaper than if we didn't have solar. So here's the big question, was it worth the money? Solar definitely isn't cheap, but I think if you can afford it, it is a great investment, especially if you're living in a third world country like the Philippines. Our solar setup, including installation, was 280,000 pesos. That's around about 4,915 US dollars. Now, in the whole, the average cost for per kilowatt hour is 11 pesos. So if we're using about 25 kilowatt hours per day and producing 25 kilowatt hours per day, which is doable, we should be saving about 145 US dollars per month or 8,250 pesos. So over the course of about 2.8 years, that's really, really short. The system should pay for itself. And I reckon that's a really, really good deal and a great investment. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So was it worth it? Well, for us, absolutely. It means lower bills, it means no power cuts and a step towards energy independence. If you're thinking about installing solar, make sure you shop around and look for the best price. Ensure that you're dealing with a reputable contractor like Giulietto, who did ours here in the Philippines. If you do live in the Philippines and you need uh, an installation, he does service anywhere in the Philippines. I'll put his information in the description below. Know your energy needs and be ready for some upfront costs, but in the long run, it will really pay for itself. If you're already using solar, I'd love to hear from you. Please let us know what kind of system you have, what you run with it, and how much you save on your electricity bills. Well, if you're still awake, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, it really helps. And if you know someone else that might benefit from this information, please share it with them as well. Also, if you like videos about building and homesteading, gardening and cooking, that kind of stuff, please subscribe to the channel so you can follow along as we develop our little homestead in Bohol. Well, till next time, take care.